at higher high school pa. So, energy daw is the ability to do work. So, energy is how things change and move, no? So, yung moving uh, objects, that's uh, energy, ano? Then, meron din tayong object na hindi gumagalaw, pero merong stored energy, no? Ganun yun. Then, we have, uh, so, this simple definition is not always applicable, ano? But, syempre, it is valid for mechanical energy. So, itong mechanical energy, these are the, uh, this is the classification of energy that we're going to talk about first, no? So, now we define and discuss one of the basic types of energy, which is kinetic energy, no? So, galing sa internet, no? Marami kasing estudyante sabi, eh, kinukuha lang doon sa internet. Eh, ano? <laughs> no? So, si kinetic energy daw, ayon kay Wikipedia, uh, the kinetic energy of an object is the energy that it possesses due to its motion. Ano? It is defined as the work needed to accelerate the body of a given mass from rest to its velocity. Ano? Having gained this energy during its acceleration, the body maintains its kinetic energy unless its speed changes. No? So, in the moving objects, it has a kinetic energy. You know, yun ang bottom line niya. So, that uh, kinetic energy also is needed to move an object. No? So, later on, makikita niyo yung relation between energy and work. No? Papakita natin yan. So, sa pang definition, galing ulit sa internet, so, kinetic energy is one of uh, several types of energy that an object can possess. So, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Ano? Pag sinabing uh, kinetic energy, that is energy of motion. Sa so, gumagalaw yung object, meron tayong kinetic energy dyan. Ano? So, if an object is moving, then it possesses kinetic energy. Tama ba yan ako? Possesses. Possesses. <laughs> okay. So, galing naman sa libro ni Gian Colley, kung yung ginagamit natin since day one. <laughs> so, kinetic energy, a moving object can do work on another object it strikes. No? So, yung kinetic energy kasi, halimbawa, so this car, halimbawa, yung kotse na yan, no? ay, meron siyang uh, moving siya, no? it has a velocity, therefore, it has a kinetic energy. Tapos, meron ngayon dito, box. So, syempre, ba, bumungo yung kotse dito, the car hits the object. No? So, that car can do or it can, ah, uh, that car can do work on the object that it strikes. No? So, tatamaan nyo ng object. So, syempre, meron siyang work na gagawin. No? Kasi, bakit? So, yung ating object, meron yung force. No? So, pag tama niya, para lang siya nag-apply ng force dun sa ating object at rest, which is itong box. Ngayon yung box, kung sapat yung kinetic energy ng ating moving object and sapat yung kanyang force, so napag-displace niya, so work is done. No? So, ano pa example ng kinetic energy natin? Ano? Pag-transfer ng kinetic energy. So, we have a flying, flying ball. A flying cannonball does work on a brick wall. It knocks down. No? A moving hammer does work on a nail. It drives into, the, into wood. In either case, a moving object exerts a force on a second object which undergoes a displacement. An object in motion has the ability to do work and thus can be said to have energy. So the energy of motion is called kinetic energy from the Greek word kinetikos meaning motion. No? So, alimbawa, yung at, uh, meron tayong kotse. No? So, initial velocity niya ito, meron siya. Then, at this point, nag-increase alimbawa yung kanyang velocity. Okay, so kapag ka ganyan, mayroong work done, ano, on the object, ano, kaya siya nag-accelerate. Okay, so now, from the equation of acceleration, di ba, so meron tayong equation na 2ax, hindi pala nakaano to, okay, 2ax is equal to, paliwanag natin na equation na to, ano, v squared, O, V2 squared, or yung final velocity, minus initial, V1 squared. Diba? Yun yung ating uh, equation sa mechanics, no? Sa kinematics. So, dito, if we're going to solve for A, or the acceleration, to divide natin ang 2x, 
both sides. So, we have this equation. Ang pinagkaya ba lang yung d natin, displacement, dito, x leg ginamit na variable. So, ngayon, we have the uh, network, no? Network done on an object. So, that is equal to f net times the displacement. Alam natin, yung f net, that is the net force, no? So, from our uh, Newton's law of motion, so, the f net, ba, yun yung summation of forces, ano? That is also f net. Net force. So, that is also equal to mass times acceleration. So, this acceleration, that is the acceleration of the object. No? So, ngayon, let's replace this acceleration by this equation. No? Pasok natin dito. So, magkakaroon tayo ngayon, m times the, uh, the equation we replaced. No? Uh, v2 squared minus V1 squared all over 2D times D. So, mangyayari dito, makakancel out yung D. Diba? Then, ang matitira is this one. So, we have M times V2 squared minus V1 squared all over 2. Then, if we're going to uh, distribute M and 2, in each term, no? So, V2 squared tapos on V1 squared. So, we are going to obtain, so, V2 squared times M, that is M V2 squared all over 2. So, kaya meron tayong 1 half sa bawat isa, no? Then, distribute lang M, then divide 2 yung pareha. So, meron tayo ngayong double unit or the network done is equal to 1 half M V2 squared minus 1 half M V1 squared. So, kung yung ating term na mv1 squared, 1 half mv1 squared, that is the translational kinetic energy of the object. Any object moving at a certain velocity has a kinetic energy Ke, which is equal to 1 half mv squared, wherein v is the velocity of the moving object and m is the mass. No? Mass yan. Yung v natin ay velocity. Okay, so malino tayo dyan sa kinetic energy na yan. Then, moving on. So, yung ating MV, uh, MV2 squared. So, this this will be the kinetic energy. O no? Final kinetic energy, for example. Halimbawa kasi meron kang object. So, yan ay nag-move. So, it has an initial velocity. Then, this object, you apply the force in order for that object to accelerate. Then, later on, yung ating object that has a initial velocity so it has a final velocity now at this moment no so we have a v2 so this v2 okay dinamit natin dito that is the object's final velocity upon applying a force or upon doing a work no on that object so we have now ke2 since we are think mv uh, one of mv squared is ke or kinetic energy so this is the object's uh kinetic energy up after applying a work, uh, applying a force or uh, doing a work on the object. Then this is the object's kinetic energy before applying a force or doing work on the object. So from that, so we have initial and final. Ano? So we have now double unit is equal to so the difference between the kinetic energy of the object Okay, is equal to 1 half mv squared, mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Okay, so tandaan natin tong uh, equation na to. This is very useful. So tandaan that the network done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. So paano yan? Ano? Pakita natin. Halimbawa, ito yung object mo. Ba, kochi yan. Kochi yan, ha? <laughs> then, you suddenly step on the gas, no? For example, you are moving at a certain velocity. No, meron ka initial velocity, so V1. So, ngayon, you decided to accelerate, you step on the gas. So, the um, engine now exerts force, ano, on your uh, car. So, that is why you're going to accelerate, no? Mag-accelerate ka, yung iyong uh, object now will be moving faster. So, you have a V2, V2 or your uh, final velocity, no? Ibig sabihin, 
you apply the work or you apply the force so you displace the object so you apply the work no you apply the network on the object that has an initial kinetic energy no this is it is in motion then after apply applying a network so you have a difference now no difference in kinetic energy because the moment you apply the work on a certain object you tend to increase the object's velocity or decrease the object's velocity so you have here a kinetic energy you know which is the kinetic energy after you applied work no the network so that network can be uh, work done in uh, for the object to accelerate it or the, uh, to increase the speed or to de decrease the speed accelerate or decelerate no so that is why we have the network done paano yung i-apply mo na work or yung gagawin mong work dun sa object so that is equal to the difference in kinetic energy no yan yung isang mahalaga nating tool sa pagsosolve ng problem okay so, balik tayo dun sa screen. Isang ba screen natin? Okay. So, now, because of the direct connection between work and kinetic energy. Okay. So, nakita natin ngayon yung relation between them. Ano? Na kapag ka pala nag-apply ka ng work sa isang moving object or object in motion, so, you will change its kinetic energy. So, the network you applied is the difference in kinetic energy actually. Okay, that is why work and energy is uh, how do you, measured in same units, you know? Yung work natin and yung ating energy is measured in what? So, that too is measured using joules, no? Pareh sila ng units. Ganun sila naging related, no? So, you can apply work on a certain object increase or decrease its kinetic energy then also an object in motion can do work no kagaya ng pinakita ko kanina moving object bumangga sa another object so that object also this object can apply or can do work on this object no so sa british alam natin foot pounds no ergs yun yung ano sa cgs naman ergs ano so, like work kinetic energy is a scalar quantity, you know, yung kinetic energy natin ay scalar quantity din. The kinetic energy of a group of objects is the sum of the kinetic energies of the individual objects. For example, you have different objects. Okay, kinetic energy of group of objects. Okay, so for example, meron kang object, no, kung gusto, kung, uh, multiple objects, no, you want to get the kinetic energy of that tree so you will go uh, you just need to okay get the individual kinetic energies uh, individual kinetic energies then get the sum dahil yan ay scalar quantity lang kaya gaya nung sa ating discussion uh, sa word we can add it directly the work energy principle can be applied to a particle and also to an object that can be approximated as particle you know? Such an object that is rigid or whose internal motions are insignificant. So now let's have an example. Ano? Kaya lang na. Okay, good. So, work on a car to increase its kinetic energy. How much network is required to accelerate a 1,000 kilogram car from uh, 20 meters per second to 30 meters per second? So, ito kagaya nung sa example natin, ay yung discussion natin kanina. Yung object natin, gusto natin pabilisin ngayon, ano? So, paano natin gagawin yun? So, we need to apply uh, the car or the engine needs to do work on the object in order for that object to increase its velocity. So, now, we have the network, no? Paano natin kukunin? So, we have the delta Ke or the difference in kinetic energy. Okay, so ano yung equation na yan? So, we have one half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Okay? So, yung ating mass, hindi nagbabago yan dahil yun ang same object. Okay? So, we have now, pwede natin simplify ito. We have 1 half m 
times v2 squared minus v1 squared. Okay, we're just, uh, we simply get the difference of the squares of the velocity, you know, the final and initial. Huwag magkakapalit, no? Kasi kapag kayang ating uh, velocity pinagpalit mo, ibig sabihin, bumagal, ano, from 30 to 20, no? Pinagpalit mo, eh. So, kapag ganun, alam na alam mo, magne-negative yung iyong kinet, uh, network dan mo. So, ibig sabihin, kapag, dan, uh, kapag ang ating network ay negative, no? ibig sabihin niyan, the network, uh, the work done is uh, done to decrease the object's kinetic energy. No? Yung ginawa mong work, okay, ang purpose nun is to decrease the object's kinetic energy. Why? Kapag positive naman, the work done is done to increase the object's kinetic energy. No? Ganun tayo dito sa kinetic energy, no? So, we have na 1 half times M natin is 1,000 kilogram. Be careful with the units, ano? Kapag kaya na yung grams, yari ka dyan. Okay, then we have V2 squared. So, we have 30 meters per second squared minus 20 meters per second squared. Okay, so pindutin natin sa mahiwagang calcule. So, we have 1 half. 10 times 1,000 times uh, 30 squared minus uh, 20 squared. Okay, so we obtain 250,000. No? So, we have uh, 250,000 joules or simply that is equal now to pwede natin i ano gamit tayo ng uh, power of 10 diba yung times 10 raised to negative 3 so we have 250 kilo joules so this is the network needed network ano network needed to increase the object's velocity from 20 to 30 so, syempre, kung halimbawa, gusto mo papagalin, equal lang. Kung gusto mo naman from 30 to 20, di ba? O, di pagpapalitin mo lang to. So, ang mangyayari sa iyo ngayon dyan, magne-negative lang ito. So, testing natin, ano? Pagpalitin natin dito. So, ito ngayon, gawin natin 30. Tapos ito, gawin natin 20. Ano mangyayari kaya? So, we have, okay, so negative 250,000 joules. Ibig sabihin, same force or same work needed to be done on the object in order for that object to decrease its velocity from 30 to 20. Just like the network needed for that object to increase its velocity from 20 to 30 meters per second. No, parehas lang. Okay, so another example, a car traveling 60 kilometers per hour can break uh, can break to a stop in a distance of 20 meters. So, kaya doon nung kotse na, tumatakbo ng 60 kilometers per hour. Na mamreno, ano? Tapos, hihinto na siya within 20 meters. If the car is going twice as fast, so gato kabilis, what is its stopping distance? So, ano daw yung distance na kailangan para huminto yung kotse? Bawa, ito yung kotse mo. Diba? Kotse. Uh, ang traveling, kung ang traveling distance daw ay 60 km per hour, na, may, na mreno ka sa point na to, okay, it, took you, uh, it takes uh, 20 meters before it completely stops. No? Stop na siya dito. Stop! No? <laughs> if the car is going twice as fast, no? Bawa ito, initially 60 km per hour, then, kung gagawin natin 120 km per hour, gano'n kaya yung stopping distance, no? Now, we assume the maximum braking force is approximately independent of speed. Okay. So, meron tayo ngayong moving car, no? So, we need to know what is the network done, no? Or a network needed for the uh, network uh, network needed to stop that object, ano? For example, dito muna tayo sa 60 kilometers, ano? 60 kilometers per hour. Pero, convert muna natin yan into 
uh, meters per second. So from our uh, mahiwagang calculus, so we have 60 kilometers, so we multiplied it by 1,000 meters. Dahil kilometer yan, then divide natin ng 3,600 dahil yung 1 hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. Okay, so we have now 16.67 meters per second. So this is now 16.67 meters per second. Ngayon, ito namang 120. So, matodobli lang, di ba? So we have a 30. Kaya pa maniwala eh. <laughs> Open natin ngayon. 120. Okay, convert, converting now, we have 33.33. So, this is 33.33 meters per second. Okay. So, ngayon, kunin muna natin yung work o network done by the car. Ano yung hint natin sa dulo? I-assume daw natin yung maximum braking force is approximately independent of speed. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung braking power ng ating kotse dito sa 60 km per hour, same lang dun sa ating uh, object na nag-move ng 120 km per hour. Okay, so ano ang magbabago kapag ka ganun ang ating discarding ginawa? Ibig sabihin, syempre, di ba, kapag ka, sa totoo, yung kotse natin, kapag kaya mas mabilis ang takbo, mas mahirap makapamreno, no? Akala mo lang ganun. Pero yung uh, braking force ng ating car actually same sila no? bakit parang mas mahirap kang magpahinto ng sasakyan kapag uh, mas mabilis kang tumatakbo kasi kapag mas mabilis tumatakbo mas mahaba yung speed na kailangan okay, pakita natin yun ano? so dito kailangan mo lang ng 20 meters na distance no? para mapahinto yung sasakyan mo so kunin natin yung network needed no? for 60 kilometers per hour so, we have 1 half mv2 squared, mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. Okay. So, we have now, okay. So, yung ating final velocity, syempre, 0, di ba? v2 is equal to 0. We have an initial velocity of 60 kilometers per hour. So, that is 16.67. So, we have now 1 half times the mass of the object. Alang mas, ano? Is the car... Okay. So, since yung acceleration yung kukunin natin, no? okay. So, we have a uh, mass, no? Tira natin yung mass. Okay. Ito lang yan. Very basic. So, 1 half mass times... So, ito magsisiro. Then, we have the V1 squared, ano? Minus... So, negative na to kasi mawala na to eh. So, we have negative 1 half times m times yung ating initial velocity 16.67 meters per second squared. So, that uh, network is equal to uh, force times the displacement, di ba? Naalala ba? So, that f is the net force, no? F net times your displacement. And also, that F net F net is equal to the mass of the object and its acceleration. Okay. So now, okay. Kunin lang natin yung F net. Okay. Kukunin natin, or yung kunin natin yung acceleration. Okay. So we have, or we can use now F net as MA na. Ano na? Yun na ngayon, ano? MA times the displacement. Okay, so, cancel lang yung M, both sides. So, we have now the acceleration. Then, yung ating distance to stop the car is 20 meters. Is equal to negative 1 half, 16.67 meters per second squared, no? So, we have now, okay. So, we have 1 half. A negative one half times sixteen point sixty seven squared all over twenty meters. So we have an acceleration of negative six point ninety five. Okay, so we have the acceleration 
six, negative 6.95 meters per second squared. Ano dapat natin maintindihan, ano? So, since nag-stop time, namareno tayo, the, uh, the car will now reduce its velocity. No? So, ibig sabihin nito, acceleration natin, pabawas ka ng velocity. So, ano yung dapat natin um, makita dito, no? So, nakalagay sa problem, assume the maximum braking force is approximately independent of speed. So, therefore, yung ating uh, object or yung ating car, fix yung kanyang force ng, okay, yung F net niya, no? Kahit magkakaiba ng speed, magkaiba ng speed, ano, na doble dito eh, 120. Yung braking force ng ating car is same pa rin. Therefore, yung i-apply na force ni car para huminto siya, or nung engine para huminto, nung brake, ano, nung brake para huminto yung kotse, F net, is M times A pa rin. Okay, ano ngayon ang mababago? Yung distance. Okay, so ngayon, let's use this again. So we have now M A. Times the distance now is equal to, ito pa rin, di ba? Ito pa rin yung equation natin, tama? So, 1 half mv2 squared. So, magsisiro ulit kasi papahintuin mo lang ulit yung kotse na doble ngayon ang bilis. So, we have negative 1 half mv1 squared. Ngayon, yung, MV1, yung v1 natin magbabago na kasi dinoble na natin yung velocity. So, cancel lang ulit yung mass, same object tayo equal lang mass niya. So, cancel out. Then, we have uh, the distance. Ano? The distance yung hinahanap natin. What is the stopping distance? So, we have down negative 1 half times yung V1 natin. Siyempre, ito na. 33.33 meters per second. So, we have 33.33 uh, .33 meters per second. So, squared. Then, divided by the acceleration the acceleration that will uh, engine apply to or the uh, the acceleration that will car that the car will undergo due to the braking force of the car no so we have now negative 6.95 meters per second squared so cancel na yung negative na yan, magpa positive na so you have the distance now equal to kindot lang ulit sa magic calcu okay so we have a uh, one half times 33.33 squared all over 6.95 okay so we have a 79.92 meters okay so kaya kung halimbawa driver ka kapag ka mas mabilis ka di ba ang dali mong huminto ang ang may isip ng iba eh mas malakas yung preno kapag ka mabagal no Pero kapag ka mas mabilis ka, ang ang bagal niya bago huminto. Ano? Ang tagal, ano? It took you a while bago huminto yung sasakyan. That, uh, ito yung katotohanan doon, ano? Kapag nagda-drive ka, you have a certain speed. Then, you have a certain, uh, the, uh, namreno ka, ano? It tends to, you want to stop the car. So, namreno ka, yung force na in-apply mo doon at that speed, no? Is the same with ad, uh, with other speed, ano? Kung ba, uh, ibang bilis mo ngayon, ibang velocity mo, mas mabilis ka. Same braking force lang din. Yun, ano? Ang nangyayari, kaya parang mas mahirap sa ating mamreno kapag ka mas mabilis, kasi humahaba yung ating stopping distance. So, compare dun sa ating 60 kilometers per hour, no? 20 meters lang. Then, dun sa ating 120 kilometers per hour, so, it took us 79.9, tama ba? 79.92 meters bago huminto. No? So, yun yun. So, bottom line, <laughs> keep distance, no? <laughs> okay. So, yun lang muna. Okay. So, next natin is potential energy, no?